All right, so I've come to the end. I've measured all the way up and I've got my 28 inches. So I can take out my measuring pin and I'll reserve that for the next towel. And then I'm just going to finish off the last tail. Just going to tuck that in. And that is that towel finished. Now if you're hem stitching, then you need to finish off your hem stitching now. And if you're not, then we can go on to the next step. So the next step is to get ready for our next towel. And I'm going to, as I already mentioned, I'm going to be sewing these um, hems by hand. So I don't need a lot of space between the two towels because I, I don't need them for fringe or anything. Also, if you're hem stitching and doing a short fringe, you also won't need a lot of room between the two towels. But if you are actually having a fringe and knotting your ends, you're going to have to leave enough fringe or enough of these warp threads that you will have enough length to knot with. If they're cut short, then you're not going to be able to knot them. It'll be too difficult. So just consider that. Now, my favorite method for spacing between towels or other items that I'm making is to use the cardboard separators. I'm actually um, out of the long cardboard separators that I should be using at this point because I've got them all rolled up in the warp. So I have these shorter ones and I'm going to use those to help space the warp. But just to let you know, normally I would use ones that are longer than the width of the project. So I am in the up shed and I'm inserting one of those. One thing I could do is kind of have that sticking out and then I go in the down shed. I could have the other crossing over but sort of sticking out and sort of space it that way. I need to advance my warp as well. A little further. Give myself plenty of space to start my new towel. And then I could have those space like that. That might, if you're not experienced, that might be a bit too difficult for you. Hopefully you have longer separators than I do. But the other alternative is to just do the up and down shed, but to have them more evenly spaced. That one, the down, uh, the up, sorry, and this one in the down. So if I have separators that are longer than the warp, than the width of the warp, then that gives me a very good platform to start weaving on. Because mine are a little bit short, I'm just going to have to be careful at the edges that they don't sort of dip down too much. Okay, so you have several options for this towel as well. If you are still wanting to do some more plain weave, you're enjoying the plain weave, you could just choose a solid color and plain weave this whole thing. Um, you could choose one of the warp colors that you've been doing, or you could choose a contrasting color if you wanted to, as long as it was harmonious enough with these warp colors that you've already got here. What I'm going to do is some plain weave borders and then I'm going to do some simple pickup for some textured towels. I do really like texture in hand towels. It makes them more absorbent and it also looks really pretty. But you can choose which one you would like to do. So I'm heddles in the up position. Once again, I'm not going to bother leaving a hem stitching towel because I don't intend to hem stitch. Okay, so I'm just going a little bit steady there because I don't want to end up with uneven edges. Shouldn't be a problem for you if you have longer sticks than I do right now. So I'm just tucking in my initial tail. We won't have all of those tails to deal with this time because we're not changing colors frequently. I plan to use the same color 
for the whole of this towel. So I'm not, personally I'm not beating too hard at the moment because I don't want these, I don't want my straight line to end up wonky because of my sticks. But I'll, I'll get, I'll get firmer with my beading as I go along. Now how much of a plain weave border you have, if you're following along with what I'm doing instead of just doing a plain weave for the whole thing. Um, is up to you and you know to be honest I've not decided quite just yet in this video how wide my border is going to be. I'm going to eyeball it and see what I think but um, of course the notes in all of your notes I will be giving the measurements for the border because I'll be writing the notes after I've done this video. I definitely want more of a border than this and also consider that when you have this off the loom if you are doing a folded hem as I will be then that will be using a little bit of your border allowance as well. So just keep that in mind for your own border, the thickness of it, that part of it will be folded away. So you can get a good idea here. Um, if you are thinking of doing uh, just a plain weave towel of what the plain weave looks like. And I chose white as my solid color just because I want my towels to be bright and cheery. And obviously if you choose a solid color for your weft that is one of the one of your warp colors then that warp color that warp stripe is going to stand out the most because you've got white crossing on white for every white stripe but for the red you've got white crossing on red for the blue you've got white crossing on blue they don't stand out quite as much but I love the way that looks I'm going to just put my stick shuttle aside for a moment. I've done a four inch border that's what I decided on and now I'm going to organize my pickup. So for pickup we need to go into the down position and for those of you who haven't done pickup so much or need the extra instruction I'm going to pick up at the front first and then transfer to the back. If you have a bit more experience with pickup then you may want to skip that and go straight to the back and do your pickup there. So if you're picking up at the front you'll need either two pickup sticks or a pickup stick and an extra, um, extra stick shuttle just to hold your threads up in place. I'm also going to leave a border at either side of the pickup rather than starting the pickup right on the edge. So I'm going to have two, go through two color sequences in the warp on each side before I start to pick up. So by that I mean I'm going to go blue, white, red, blue, white, red and same on this side except it's going to be going in the other direction, red, white, blue, red, white, blue. And that means that I'm going to have a border of 12 warp threads on either side. 
So I'm going to start picking up on the right hand side here and I think I'm going to just do a one one pick up. So I'm starting with one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up. So when I say one down, I'm pressing down on a warp thread and when I say one up, I'm picking one up, down and up. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get to the other side and I'm going to once again make sure that I am leaving my border threads. If you haven't done pick up before you may want to watch my video on pick up sticks. I'll put that up in the top right hand corner for you to check out. So just checking, counting off my 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's two repeats of the color sequence. And I'm holding them aside so that I can just make the pickup stick go underneath them. So now I've got my pattern picked up. I can pop that close to the heddle, pop it on edge, and then put my other pickup stick into the back. directly behind the heddle and then once I'm sure I've got the correct pattern picked up behind then I don't need the front stick anymore. I can get rid of that and I can just pop that stick up to the back until I'm going to use it. Okay so we've got our pickup all complete. Our pickup stick is at the back. Now I've finished off in a down shed. It's going to beat that and pop into up. Just be careful when you're advancing your warp that your pickup stick doesn't fall out. I mean it's not the end of the world if it does. You can just pick it back up again but it's a pain in the neck if you have to do that. All right so let's do an up shed. So this is the first part of the pickup sequence. Pretty easy four step sequence. Up. Now we're going to go into neutral with the heddle, bring the pickup stick forward and turn it on edge. Now you have to make sure at your edges that your thread is going to go around, wrap around the selvage thread or the edge warp thread. Otherwise you're going to get pull in, you're going to get unattractive edges. So into that shed. And I don't need to wrap around that selvage because it already is, but you just need to pay attention and make sure that they are wrapping. Okay, so that's my first row of pickup. Then I go back into the up shed again, making sure that it's wrapping around and it's going to. Okay, up shed. And then we're going into the down shed. And that's one pickup sequence. Just those simple four steps. Now don't forget these will be printed out for you in your printable as well if you need the extra help. Okay, shall we repeat the sequence? So we just finished off in the down shed, back into the up shed. making sure that I'm always going around the edge thread. So up, heddle into neutral, pick up stick on edge, going around the selvage, pick up stick can go back, then up again, And finishing off with down. As you can see, I have just run out of weft thread. So I'm going to pop that tail in 
and I'm going to wind myself some new thread onto my shuttle so that I can keep weaving. All right, I'm all loaded up and ready to go again. So that means I'm going to pop into the up shed and I'm going to break one of my own rules here, but I have a good reason. So this is a little bit like me saying, do what Kelly says, not what she does. So I cut my last tail from my weft that just ended and I'm bringing in the new weft. Now, if I was doing it according to my own rules, I'd be coming in from this side, right? Just like I showed you with the last towel. But, but, a little bit of a difference this time. I'm weaving in different sheds in a different, I'm going in a sequence, right? And so far, I've been starting my sequence in the up shed, coming in from the left. So if I all of a sudden start from the up shed and start coming in from the right, then my weaving brain, because this is how my weaving brain operates, will go, hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to be coming in from the left because that's what I'm accustomed to. So that's the reason why if I run out of weft yarn again, I will tuck it on this side. I'll make sure that I finish on this side and tuck it in that side so that I don't have a build up. But I'm not too worried because it's just two little tails over this side. It's not like I'm changing um, my weft th threads, you know, with a great deal of frequency like I was with the last tail. So yeah, I'm allowed to break my own rules sometimes <laughs> as long as I have a reason and I do. So I'm tucking that one in the same side and you probably won't even be able to tell. Okay, so this is the pickup row. In case you missed it, I did the up shed and now I'm doing the pickup row, which is heddle, neutral, pickup stick on edge, and then back into the up shed. And then the down shed. Now I'm finding that I, I'm not needing to go around my edge threads manually they are doing just fine on their own. So it really just depends on the project, on your pickup and on the number of steps in your sequence and all that kind of thing. But for this one, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so not much more to tell at this point. I'll keep weaving the sequence for a little bit just because I know some of you like to watch a bit extra and have those and just really make sure and get it stuck in your mind what the sequence is and that's fine but the only thing I really want to point out is that once you start your pickup you're going to be weaving the pickup for 20 inches okay because we started out with the plain weave border and we did that for four inches before commencing pickup so if I do that for four inches at the beginning of the towel, then I weave pick up for 20 inches, that's 24, and then at the end I'm going to finish off with another lovely 4 inch plain weave border which will bring me to 28 inches and that is the length that I want for my towel. I want it to be the same length as the other towel. Now when you get this, these two towels off the loom you may find that this second towel has a different shrinkage rate to the first one. In fact, I'm certain you will find that it has a different shrinkage rate. So it will be a slightly different size, but don't worry about that. That's just because we're doing a different weave structure. There's gonna be a little more draw in. And that's actually something that I like about this and why I chose to do pick up on this towel was to have that little bit of shrinkage, that little bit of bunchiness that makes an extra absorbent and sort of luxurious towel. So as before, make sure you leave me a comment down below if there's anything that I've missed or anything that you're not sure about 
make sure that you check your PDF notes as well. You may find that there's information in there that you need and can't find in the video. It can be a little hard to find a video, a specific part in a video. You think where on earth was that bit where she said about such and such, but all the basics will be in the pattern and in the notes. And so you'll find that a very handy reference, I'm sure. Oh, here's another thing that I can mention just in case you run into it. Because I had a student say this to me recently, and I think it's a fairly common problem with the pickup stick. So when we turn the pickup stick on edge, sometimes it gets a little wayward and it wants to go, it wants to fall back down flat. If that is happening with you, and I'll show you, I'll show you what I actually mean. I just need to get to the pickup stick rows. So this is the start of the sequence. First row is head or up. Okay, then head or neutral. So say I've brought my pickup stick forward and I've turned it on edge and it keeps falling like this. Sometimes it'll snap down. A couple of reasons why that might be happening. Um, one is that you may not be turning it on edge enough. Like if you have a little bit of an angle on it, then as soon as I move things about, it's not going to do it now. <laughs> okay. If I jiggle things about, there you go, it will fall. So in the course of you actually using your shuttle and going into the shed, because that jiggles the threads a little bit, jiggles this heddle a little bit, then it might be falling because of that. So make sure that you've got it right on edge. Um, another tip is don't try and um, don't try and have it way up here because what happens there is you can barely see the shed that it creates. It's barely discernible. But if I bring it right up as close to the heddle as I can and pop it up like that, then I've got this great, big, beautiful shed to go in and I don't have any worries about catching threads from underneath that shouldn't be in that pattern weft. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to mention about it falling over if you do have it on edge and you have it up close to the heddle and it still keeps falling over, check your tension. Your tension may be just that little bit too loose so that that stick isn't getting wedged in there. Okay, so that is our pattern pick. And I'm almost ready to advance my warp. I'm getting up a bit close here. I need a bit more space. And then up shared. Finishing off with a down shed. Remember those four simple steps. Very easy to remember. Okay, so into neutral to advance my warp. And remember what I was saying to you before about being careful of your pickup stick when you advance your warp? Well, one way that you can be extra careful is something that I'm in the habit of doing anyway, and I've probably mentioned this before as well, that you don't need to let off a heap of slack each time. Just let a little bit off. So I'm reaching to the back. I'm just letting off a little bit. Okay. So you can see that it's definitely loosened, but not so much that my stick's going to want to drop out of place. And then I can adjust the tension at the front and just do it gradually like that. And then you won't have any problems with your stick falling out of place. It's also better to be in the habit of doing it that way because it will make your weaving better. If you try and do your tension all in one hit, then your overall tension is just not going to be as good. A little bit more. Okay. 
slide my stick back and one more tip while I'm here can you tell I'm just making this up as I go along <laughs> after you advance your warp you'll notice that the last weft pick that you wove has come away a little bit from the the previous pick so it's a little bit loose in the shed and that's just because you released that tension so they weren't being held under tension so much anymore and they don't have another weft pick sitting on top of them yet to sandwich them in so after each um, advancing of your warp just give an extra beat and then that pops that into place for you and you're all good to go once again I'm going to answer a question while I weave and it's about my online weaving school and it's a fairly common question that people kind of wonder when they're not so familiar with my school but they are familiar with my YouTube channel so they usually want to know what's the difference between my online school and my YouTube channel well, the first difference, of course, is that my online weaving school, although it has free classes, it is not entirely free. The free classes that are on there um, are mostly classes that you would see here on YouTube as well. And then there are paid classes, a lot of different classes like 50 plus, and there are memberships available where you can pay a yearly month or monthly fee and that will give you access to a library of the classes and there are different levels of membership as well so that's the first difference is that for one to access more content you do, you do need to pay so then people wonder well why would I pay you for classes when I can just watch your YouTube videos because you've got so many YouTube videos true I've got I don't know something like 200 videos here on YouTube now I, I can't even think about that that seems so bizarre <laughs> I can't believe that I have put that many videos on YouTube but the, I'd say the main differences between the YouTube videos and my classes on my online weaving school are that with my classes I take a very particular and long amount of time putting them together and I ensure that I think of everything that I possibly can for each class to give as much information I want my students to know everything that I know about a certain topic and I don't hold back anything and I also take extra time in the editing and the putting together of the videos and also the filming of them so you would notice probably straight away when you started watching one of my classes from my school that I have a lot of different camera angles it's something that my classes are kind of known for and that I take the extra time to give the extra information because I want my classes to be like as though you are here with me sitting beside me and I'm showing you what I do and I'm teaching you how to do it so the classes are very detailed you could almost say that the YouTube, my YouTube channel is a taste of what you could get over at my online weaving school so I always recommend it for people who really want to go more in depth with their weaving they want to take it more seriously I don't recommend it to someone who has just started out and they're not really sure whether they're going to continue weaving or what they want to learn or whether they even really like it I recommend it to someone who is ready to level up because I don't want you wasting your money and then being dissatisfied another major difference is the community so my online weaving school when you purchase a membership you get access to the community and I think that this is really in a way it's one of the most important things about leveling up with your weaving is to be in among other like-minded people in a very specific focus group where you know that you're going to be well supported and that you can share all of 
your projects and your questions and you can take advice and give advice. And then as part of that community as well, every class over every class from my online weaving school has the feature of leaving comments underneath each video. So yes, you can leave me comments here on YouTube and yes, I will answer any comment as long as it's polite. But at the online weaving school, you can ask a question under each each video class. So each class is divided into topics or sections. And so you can be very specific with your sections. You can actually watch something, a section of the video, stop for a moment and then leave your comment under that video. So it's very easy for me to find and I can make sure that you get the best answer. And then I guess the last thing is that I'm very dedicated to providing as much support and feedback to my students as I possibly can. And so if you have a have a membership or you've purchased a class from me or even if you've purchased a pattern from me on Etsy and you need help with something I'm there to help you which I think is kind of a unique thing about my weaving school is that it's very interactive and you have direct access to me I always say to my students I'm only an email away I'm only a message away yes it's a little bit difficult with the time difference a lot of students are in different countries to me but it does mean that for most questions for most support I will get back to the student within 24 hours and I really work hard to aim to do that so yeah those are the main differences I would say the weaving school is for people who want more and you will get more if you sign up there now I am getting very close to needing to advance my warp again so I'm running out of space but I need to measure. Before I go on I need to get my little pin and put my pin in and I need to measure how far I've come. Now you can either measure from the very beginning of your plain weave border or you can just measure from your pickup and I'm just going to measure from my pickup section because I already measured my plain weave border and I'm positive that it was four inches so I'm more than happy with that section and and so I'm just going to use my pickup section to measure this section so I know that I have to do 20 inches here so that is exactly six inches which I'm going to write down in my notebook right now don't rely on yourself to try to remember it because if you are anything like me you will not remember it you'll tell yourself that you can remember it but you won't remember it so I'm writing down six inches in my notebook which means I have 14 inches left of this lovely pickup to do.
All right, so I'm at the point where I've woven my 20 inches. I can now remove my pickup stick from the back and I'm going to weave my four inch border. So I'm gonna place a pin where I finished weaving my pickup so that it's marked. And then I've just got four inches of plain weave to do. And then this towel is finished. And we're done just like that. Now for my last cutting off, I'm just going to tuck my little tail in there, just as I have for all the others. Give that a little beat. And then we're ready to release the warp from the back. Remembering that if you are intending to hem stitch, now would be the time before you release the tension that is. And if you are planning to do knots, remember you need to leave good fringe length. Okay, so I'm just going to unceremoniously cut this off. And I don't have my sharp scissors with me. I've only got these little cheapies. Sharp scissors make this a bit more enjoyable. But these still do the job. This takes a bit longer. Okay. All done. And now I can release the front break. And I can pull these out and see how they are. Now, I'll just say before you start pulling these out that if you are going to machine hem, you'll notice that the last weft that I put in is starting to come loose already. So I wanna treat that really gently. It doesn't matter too much if it starts to come a little bit loose, but you don't want lots of weft threads coming away. So I'm just gonna be gentle with this at the end and then when I take it off at the start I'm also going to be gentle with that so I've got all of my knots there and I'm just going to undo those knots I can also gently pull out my separators any separators that you have in there can now come out gently. And I'm going to want to take this straight to my sewing machine to either zigzag or to my serger to finish off those edges before I wet finish. So now we just need to, once our tails are totally dried, we need to cut off any of those little tails or ends that we have tucked into the selvages. And it's also a good opportunity to just neaten up any stragglers. You can see there I've got my serger threads hanging off and I, I don't want them in the way when I'm getting prepared to sew the hems. So also I have a few tails on this towel, but not too many. It's the other towel that will have most of the tails on it. But you just want to, with a sharp pair of scissors, cut them close to the fabric, but be really careful not to actually cut your fabric. It doesn't really matter which scissors you use for this as long as they're sharp. So this is the towel that has a lot of little ends and tails that need to be cut. And so I'm just speeding this up a little bit and once again you're just going over those tails cutting everything flush with the fabric as close as you can get it without actually cutting your fabric
Now I'm just going over the towels with a hot steamy iron. They do get fairly crinkly in the drying process. A little tip, I didn't do this because I dried my towels overnight so they were already completely dry by the time I got to them. But a tip is to actually iron your towels while they're slightly damp still and that helps to get the crinkles out. So I'm just making a double hem here. First hem I've folded over to hide my serging stitches and the second hem is a little bit thicker. Fold that over completely and iron it down. And then I pop some pins in there as well to hold it all in place so that I can get to the machine. The thickness of your hem is up to you if you're doing a hem. I usually like to have mine between half and one inch thick. And then I do exactly the same to the other end. I take that to the machine and I like to use a zigzag stitch for hemming hand wovens. It just seems to work really well with the machine. It's not as taxing on the machine. Um, you, as you can see, you may need to give the fabric a little bit of help to guide it along more so than you would for a commercial fabric, which is usually much thinner and feeds through pretty easily. So you may need to help your machine a little bit. A lot of weavers have actually told me about uh, walking foot saying that's a really good thing for sewing thicker fabrics. So I don't have one of those yet, but um, it's on my to buy one day list. My last step of making the towels is to give them another hot steam press and I like to pay particular attention to the hems that I've just sewn. Hems look so much nicer when they're sitting really nice and flat, when they're not lumpy or soft looking. When they look a little bit crisp it makes them look a lot more professional somehow. And the other the second towel with the pickup needs a little more attention with the iron than the first one does because it's got the different um, rates of tension with the pickup and the plain weave but if you iron that nice and flat once again it's going to look beautiful so i hope you've really enjoyed this project i've certainly enjoyed putting it together for you if you're on instagram and you make these towels please tag me on instagram and i will share your project in my stories don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel it's your likes and your views and your subscriptions that keep this channel going and also don't forget that the pdf file for this project is available on my blog until next time happy weaving